My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. On this channel, I talk about dividend growth investing, investing into a dividend growth strategy so that I can generate passive income or cash flow. And I'm very transparent. I share with everyone here my portfolio, what I'm investing in, what, what is working and what is not working. And I'm really addressing new investors, new investors that are interested in investing in a dividend growth model and I talk about that in every single video. Um, I take a little bit of a different approach where I'm trying to, you know, when I create these videos and when I prepare for the videos, I think about, you know, what was my experience like? How did I, you know, what, what was important for me to learn as I started uh, investing in this strategy? And I share with everyone very candidly, very transparently, what, what has worked and what hasn't. And in every single video, I talk about a different topic as well as relating it back to my portfolio and where I'm at. In today's video, I want to talk about Vanguard. And as a new investor, you probably have heard of Vanguard. Um, maybe your, your parents or your, your friends have said, yeah, you know, if you want to you wanna retire rich, you got to invest in Vanguard. And as a new investor, you might be thinking, well, what's a Vanguard? How do I invest, invest in Vanguard? Are, are they like Coca-Cola or McDonald's? Like, what does a Vanguard do? Um, and you may have heard some people say, yeah, you got to invest into VTI or v, uh, VTSAX. And, and you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, wh what is that even? And a lot of new investors quickly get intimidated when, when they hear these things. Okay, you got to do this, you got to do that. And not fully understanding what, what they're getting themselves into or what they're doing. So in this video, I'm going to talk about investing into Vanguard index funds and ETFs and what it's like as a new investor, in particular, as a dividend growth investor. All right. So Vanguard, Vanguard was founded by Jack Bogle or John Bogle um, back in the 1970s. And back in the 1970s, Wall Street was predominantly, you know, and it still is for the most part, predominantly run by fund managers, mutual fund managers. And Vanguard is a little bit different. Vanguard is an investment advisor, but they, they do it with a twist. They're, they're not publicly owned. They, they really only have the shareholder or you, you know, those that are purchasing the, uh, the ETFs and, and index funds um, as their, their primary focus. What we should be doing is working and what we have been doing here at Vanguard is putting the investor first and innovating for the investor and not for ourselves and uh, trying to keep costs as low as we can, which is rock bottom. That's been the idea from the very beginning of Vanguard uh, because a mutual company doesn't have a private owner out there and, or a public owner. And so we have no one to serve but the shareholder. All right, and with Vanguard, really, it, it is different. And if you've, if you've heard of maybe some other mutual fund companies out there uh, on Wall Street, you know, maybe BlackRock or T. Rowe Price, Vanguard separates itself from, from the crowd by really focusing on the shareholder and really keeping costs low. And when Jack first came out with, with the index fund back in the 70s, now, once again, this, was, this is a completely new concept. This has never been heard of before. Back in the 70s, when Jack was, was sharing this on Wall Street, the fund managers on Wall Street really kind of responded like this. And as, as time went on and as people were educated and understood, okay, the impact of, of the fees that these fund managers were charging on Wall Street, they, people started to, to realize that. When I say people, I mean your average investor and then started switching from actively managed funds to index funds. And then, you know, fast forward 30 years and, you know, when you look at Jack, Jack is like, All right. Well, one of my favorite quotes from Jack Bogle is time is your friend, impulse is your enemy. And that that is that is so, so true on the channel here. I always talk about, you know, buying and holding and the the process of, you know, the, the concept of dividend growth investing. It is not a short term investment strategy. It is really a long term investment strategy. So why why do fees matter? When, when we think about fees, uh, especially when, when we're comparing actively managed funds or passively managed, so active would be your mutual funds, 
passive would be your index funds or your ETFs in that case. Um, why do fees matter? You know, in a lot of cases, the the fees are, are just maybe 1%, in some cases, 2%, a half of a percent. Um, but why, why does that matter? And I think Jack really, you know, when, when he talks about averages and, and what, what is going on in terms of, of fees, he's really addressing the masses and, and talking to uh, to your normal investor. And when it comes to fees, this is what Jack had to say about the, uh, the impact of fees over the long term. A typical retiring investor putting in a certain amount a month and growing with salary and all would have maybe $450,000 at the 5% level on, in his retirement plan and maybe 650,000 in the indexed plan. Mm -hmm. That's just the math. Mm -hmm. It is inarguable. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. I call it after Justice Brandeis, the relentless rules of humble arithmetic. The low fees from Vanguard is really what separates Vanguard from the rest. And in Warren Buffett's 2013 letter to its shareholders at Berkshire, um, Warren Buffett had the following to say. Um, he said that over the years, Warren Buffett is, has been asked repeatedly, what, what should a normal investor do um, with, with their money? How should they invest their money? And Warren Buffett over the years has, has repeatedly said that he always suggests or recommends that the normal investor invest into a low fee index fund. And Warren Buffett in 2013 here says that he's putting his money where his mouth is and that his advice to his trustee could not be more simple, that he wants to put 10% of the cash in short-term government bonds and 90% in a very low-cost S&P 500 index fund. And he suggests Vanguard's. Um, and he goes on to say, I believe the trust's long-term results from this policy will be superior to those attained by most investors, whether they be pension funds, institutions, or individuals who employ high fee managers. The fees are really, really where it starts. As a normal investor, that is what we have to be looking out for, is if we're investing into uh, a high fee mutual fund, and I know that this is something that Dave Ramsey really talks a lot about, we really have to ask ourselves, okay, is this the right thing for me? All right, so moving on, I, I talk on my channel about investing into individual companies. And, and I do that. In my individual portfolio here in M1 Finance, I'm invested into over 90 holdings. Um, six of these holdings in the portfolio are ETFs. And they're, they're low fee ETFs. I have, um, but the majority of the portfolio is into individual companies. Companies that, that the majority of you are gonna have heard of. Um, I'm invested into Disney. I'm investing into McDonald's, Target, Nike, um, maybe some companies that maybe you're, you're not so uh, familiar with. Um, I'm invested into utility companies like Next Era Energy, Duke Energy, Southern Company, and I built my portfolio this way. And this is what I share primarily here on YouTube. However, I am also invested heavily into Vanguard funds in my uh, tax deferred accounts. And that's what I want to talk about here for just a second. In my individual portfolio, this is a taxable account. Um, in my tax deferred portfolio, I'm invested into solely Vanguard low fee index funds and ETFs. And let's talk about that for a second. Before I talk about the, the individual ETFs and, and index funds that I own, I think it's important to understand the different account types. This is this is very important, especially as we're, we're here now in, in tax time. It's important that you understand this. And I've, I've shared a, another video on the, the implications of dividend taxes on your portfolio, and I'll, I'll leave a link to that in the top right. But here what you can see in front of you, there's, there's pretty much four different account types that you can invest in. You have your traditional IRA where you're, you're getting the tax benefit up front, but then you're taxed at the end. Um, the next one would be a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k where you're taxed up front, but you're not taxed on the earnings when you take out the distributions later on. And you have to be 59 and a half. Um, one that, I, that I've that i started here the last couple of years is an HSA, 
where you're getting the tax benefit up front as well as um, in the back end when you're getting the distributions. Here on the bottom, this is the least tax efficient in your individual account. There is no tax benefit here where you're, you're investing after tax dollars and you're taking out after tax, you know, your distributions are, are taxable. And understanding the different tax rates are so, so important, uh, whether they be qualified or non-qualified. But I'm not gonna get into that video, in, into that in this video. You can check out my other video if you're interested in that. So in my personal portfolio, I own the majority of my Van, Vanguard uh, investments are in my Roth IRA, my Roth 401k, and my HSA. What I share here on YouTube, primarily you're, you're just seeing my individual account, but I am at also invested into Vanguard funds um, in my, my tax deferred accounts. Now, I wanna jump over here to the Vanguard portfolio allocation models. Now, this I wanna keep this very, very simple, but when you're investing into Vanguard ETFs or, or index funds, I think it's important to understand what, what it is going to look like and how you can have your, your portfolio set up. Um, you may have heard different people say, okay, you should invest mostly into stocks, you should invest some of that into bonds, and, and all of that. On this channel, I'm not gonna tell you what what you should do, but I'm gonna share what I personally do and what you could consider depending on your age. But what is really interesting about this is you can see the historical return and the risk associated with that this investment uh, mix here on this slide here. And I'll share a link to this page in the description below if you wanna go and check this out. So this is looking at the last some, you know, 80 or so years, almost 100 years, 93 years of performance if you were just to invest into bonds. And you can see here the average return if you just invested into uh, bonds, you'd have a 5% return. And the cool thing is, is you can see what would be, you know, over historically, and now historical returns are no guarantee of future returns, but you can see over the last 93 years, what would have been the best year and what would have been the, the worst year. But most importantly, of those 93 years, how many years did, would your portfolio be in the red or negative? And this is a way that you can assess, okay, your own personal risk tolerance. If you're going to invest purely into index funds or ETFs, what, what is your risk tolerance? So if you look back over the 90, last 93 years, 14 of those 93, you would have been in the red had you just invested into bonds. And you can see the mix break down and you can see the numbers as they, they change. The more exposure you get into stocks, the higher your average annual return will be, but also, you know, you're, you're going to have a uh, higher, you know, your, the best year is going to be higher. The worst year is also going to be higher and the years of loss will also be higher. So, this is something that you can take a look at and you can play around with. Um, but what I want to get at here is what Vanguard or what Jack Bogle has historically or traditionally recommended when he gets asked the question, well, I'm a normal investor, what should I do, right? And Jack's response to that is typically in terms of the balanced fund. Balanced fund in this sense is the 60-40, 60% stocks, 40% bonds. In this scenario, your average annual return would just be over 8.5%. Your best year would have been over 36%. And your worst year would have been over under over 26%. And then the years with loss is 22 out of 93. So this is what um, Jack Bogle has historically recommended when he's been asked that question. Now it's conservative and it protects you against your emotions. Because when the market goes way down, stock market goes way down, the bond market actually usually goes up a little bit under that circumstance. So the, the, it, it, we have investors have behavioral problems, and they panic if their if their account goes down 50 percent. An account like this probably goes down 32 or 3 percent. Okay. So you don't get exposed to the worst of it. The thing I want to highlight here is the impact, the behavioral impact, and our emotions. Um, when you see your portfolio go down it really, it causes a chemical reaction in us and it, and it causes stress, it causes anxiety. And you ha no one can tell you this but, but yourself, you have to understand what is your own personal risk tolerance. If you were to ask somebody, you know, a friend or a family member, you know, what, what 
you know, advice or recommendations, they have a different risk tolerance than you in most cases. And so when you're seeking advice, you really have to look first from within. You know, what is your, your risk tolerance? If you can imagine, you know, of, you know, looking at 93 years, if you're okay with 22 of those being at a loss or being in the red, not necessarily at a loss, just seeing the portfolio value go down. There, there is no disputing that the more stock allocation you have in your portfolio, the higher your return will be. And you can see here under the growth section that if you were to go with 100% stocks over the long term, there's, there's no question you're going to have the highest annual return but also you're gonna have the most volatility. You're gonna have the most upswings and downswings over, over that time period. So you really have to understand if you're gonna invest in the, in the ETFs or index funds, what is, what is your risk tolerance? Now let's jump back into M1 Finance. Now that we understand what Vanguard is, the impact of fees, we understand the importance of our emotions, we understand the different portfolio mixes and, and how that's going to impact our returns over, over time and the volatility associated with that. Let's talk about some of my favorite Vanguard uh, index funds and ETFs. And the, the ETFs that I'm gonna share here, the majority of them I actually own in my own portfolio. So not here in, in M1 Finance, but actually in my Vanguard account. But let's take a look at some of them. So the way that I have it set up here, um, I'll share this link um, to this portfolio that I, or this pie that I, I built here. This is not a, a pie that I invest in, but this is just something that I built and put together. You can see the historical return over the last five years. Important to note that this is not factoring in the reinvestment of dividends. This is just the capital appreciation. And so if you follow my channel, you know that I don't invest into bonds in my individual portfolio, in my individual account. Um, I do have some exposure to bonds in my, uh, in my Roth IRA. And in my Roth IRA, I am also invested in the 60-40 fund that, we were, that Jack Bogle was just talking about. The 60-40 fund or index fund is not an ETF. So I hold this in my Roth IRA. Um, if you're interested in that, you can check it out with ticker symbol VBIA. X and you can you can check it on the Vanguard site or, or wherever and you can scroll down and you can see okay what is the expense ratio what is the minimum amount that you have to you know invest to, to get access to this index fund you can see here you can see the historical returns as well as the portfolio composition and this is what we were talking about just a second ago with the 60% in stocks and 40% in bonds. Okay, so going back over to here. Now, the way that I have it set up here is if, uh, you know, if I were talking to a mid-20s or early 30 individual and they were interested in just investing in index funds, they had no interest in investing in individual companies, this is something that I would recommend or, you know, not as financial advice, but say, okay, this would be a good, a good starting point. It has a starting yield of just over 2%. Um, that 2% is is not very large, but also if you're in your early 20s, you're not expected to retire tomorrow, so there is still time for that to grow. The expense ratio is also very low. So the way that I have it set up, and this is just, you know, once again, factoring in the audience here, if you're in your 20s or 30s, I think this is a good, a good, uh, a good breakup or a good setup of, or good target allocation, I guess you could say. So I have here 10% into real estate. My favorite Vanguard real estate ETFs are VNQI and VNQ. Uh, this way you're getting exposure to the entire world, pretty much. Uh, VNQ is just focused on the US. VNQI is focused internationally. Uh, the next one is going to be international broad-based ETFs. This in the ETF, I actually own in my Roth IRA, in my Vanguard account. Um, the reason why I like this ETF is it is it has pure exposure to the international market. If you look at other ETFs that have exposure to the international uh, international market, they also have exposure to the U.S. That is why I chose this because there's limited exposure, if at all, to the United States. It has North America in there, but it does not focus on the U.S. So you're not getting a double bubble, if if you you know if that makes sense. 
Um, next, if you were to invest directly into bonds, these are two uh, ETFs that I, I've that I, I've looked at. Um, I've not invested in yet, but in the future, as um, you know, as I age, you know, all that good stuff. These are these are a few that I would highly consider investing in my own portfolio. I'm not doing that today, but down the road, this is these are two. ETF, bond ETFs that I would be interested in. One focusing just on the US market and the other focusing internationally. Now, the uh, the last slice here is just US-based, uh, broad-based ETFs. So uh, in this slice or in this pie here, um, it's looking just at VOO. So VOO, VOO is just tracking the S&P 500. VTI is looking at the total stock market. So you're getting exposure to over 7,000 companies, US companies. VIG, I really like VIG because it, uh, this ETF is holding companies that have a history or a track record of dividend growth. So this is more centered around you know, your value-oriented uh, companies and not so much your, your Amazons, your Facebooks, your Teslas. VYM, this is a high dividend company. This is looking at your oil companies. This is looking at your uh, your SIN stocks that have a higher starting yield. It could be your AT&T uh, and, and so forth. And the last one is VGT. I really like VGT because it is tracking the technology sector and is a hyper growth sector. Um, if you were to look into VGT, they have the largest exposure to Microsoft, to Apple, and both Apple and Microsoft are dividend growth stocks, individual companies that I hold in my own portfolio. So this is how I have it broken up. And once again, these the majority of these, I am invested myself. And let, me, let me go back here and, and share with everybody. Uh, VOO, I have this in my Roth 401k. VTI, I have this in my Roth IRA. VIG, I have this in my Roth IRA. VYM, I have this in my Roth IRA. IRA. VGT, I have actually in my taxable account here in the portfolio. So I own every single one of these ETFs and every single one of them has exposure in a different way. If we go back and we look at the, the real estate uh, slices, VNQ, the majority of my HSA is invested into VNQ. I also have it in my Roth IRA. Um, VNQI, I actually have in my portfolio here in M1 Finance. So I'm in invested into the majority of these ETFs. And, and lastly here, the, uh, the VXUS, I'm invested into this in my Roth IRA. So the, the ETFs and the index funds here that I'm sharing with you all, I, the majority of them except for bonds, I'm invested in um, myself. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, this actually might be the better approach for me. Um, I don't have the time to do the research. I don't have the time or desire really to, to follow up on companies. I, I think I, I'd rather just take the most, to pass, the most passive approach possible. And my response to, be, to that would be, go for it. That, that just probably would serve you much better had you tried to, to pick your own individual companies. Now, in my particular case, I do both. In my individual account here, I have just around 90 holdings. And I don't recommend that for everyone. I think uh, I, I've shared this in previous videos of why I do that and what, what kind of impact that has on my, my day to day. And if you're interested in that, you, you, know, you can subscribe to the channel and, and check out my other videos. Um, but what, what's worked for me is I really like, you know, in my individual account, investing in individual companies. And for me personally, in my Roth IRA, my Roth 401k, my HSA, I'm invested into high quality, low fee Vanguard ETFs and the ones that we just talked about here in this video. So if you're a new investor and you're thinking to yourself, okay, what is right for me? Really, it, it starts with what you're doing right now, educating yourself, understanding, okay, what, what options are there and understand that people are gonna have a different view than you and, and that's okay. You know, coming back to, to Jack Bogle back in the 1970s, when he first rolled out the index fund and that was not the norm and, and everyone laughed at him, right? That That's okay if you have a different idea and if you have a different opinion. I think the most important thing is you're the one that has to, to sleep at night. You're the one that has to deal with the your emotions. And I think the, the best thing that you can do 
is, is focusing on that, gaining control of your emotions is going to serve you better, whatever you do, whether it be investing into individual companies or going strictly with, with index funds. Um, so that's every, everything that I had for the video today. If you're new to the channel and you, you like the video, I'd invite you to subscribe, like the video, comment, and I'll catch everybody in the next video.